Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In this week's video, we're taking a tour of a DIY overlander tiny home. These type of tiny homes are becoming extremely popular, especially with people who want to travel overseas or off-road with their rigs. That's exactly what this couple has done. They've already traveled through Europe, Canada, and most of the United States. It seems there's no stopping them. And what I find impressive about this overlander in particular is that they built it themselves from scratch. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new unique home tour. Hi, my name's Phil. My name's Lynn. And we're really excited today to bring you a tour of our Overland vehicle, our world traveler. A dream of Overland travel has been with me for a long, long time. We've had many camper vans over the years, haven't we, love? We have, three that you've yeah. built. I always determined that when I retired, I was going to have an Overland adventure vehicle. We have less stuff to worry about and we have more flexibility now to go and do what we want. I found this vehicle and it was a snowplow at the time. I designed the whole substructure to go underneath the body, bought all of the panels to make the body and actually fabricated the whole thing on my drive at home. It was a 10 month journey to build the truck into the state where we could go and take it out and use it. But it's a long term project and it's developed over the years. Uh, I would reckon we're over 80,000 pounds now into the truck. I've been to a lot of Overland shows. I've seen some huge, beautiful Overland rigs, but I wouldn't like to drive some of those rigs the places that I've taken this. This isn't an Overland rig for the shows. This is an Overland rig for us to use, isn't it? It is. Basically, I was trying to fit everything that we already wanted into the smallest possible package. This vehicle, we've taken it to France. We went through Spain all the way to Gibraltar and then we shipped it over to Morocco and went into the Atlas Mountains, which was superb. We had the vehicle shipped over to Baltimore and we've been in and out of America and Canada. We're heading towards Mexico, slowly. We are two ordinary people. We don't have a lottery win. We don't have huge investments to go back on. But this, if you manage your life and your finances, is achievable for anybody. We now both have a pension. Within the value of our pension, we can get out and live on this lifestyle. This is my Overland vehicle. It's an M-A-N-L-E 160C. It's one of the very last vehicles to leave the factories in Europe that doesn't have any electronic management systems on the engine. It's even got a mechanical fuel pump. The reason for me choosing this vehicle was that it's simple to repair. Anywhere I go, Asia, Africa, somebody will be able to help me repair it if I can't repair it myself. It's got a four and a half litre turbo diesel engine, which considering the vehicle's only about seven tonnes fully loaded, really powers it along and keeps it up with the traffic. Obviously going up the steep hills, it's a little bit slower, but it's a great engine and it's a well-balanced vehicle. The vehicle is two wheel drive, but it has the option of turning into a four wheel drive vehicle just by flicking a switch. And it's got the option of locking differentials 
and a high ratio box and a low ratio box. So I've got in effect 12 forward gears and I can lock up both axles and I can put it in four wheel drive. So it enables me to get through anywhere that I would be brave enough to take it. It has a tip over cab if I need to access the engine. Everything's really open, really easy to get to. The whole philosophy behind the build was to keep it as short and as narrow and as low as I possibly could. So it's 7.1 meters long, it's 2.3 meters wide and it's 3.4 meters high. I know that's in metric, but I am English after all. The vehicle as standard came straight from the military with military grade tires. Fantastic when you're off road, but terrible on the motorway. And to be honest, 50% of my time is on a motorway and 10% or less is off road. So I changed out for 22 and a half inch wheels with normal quarry truck tires. These tires have quite an aggressive tread, but they are still good on the motorways and on the normal roads. I fabricated the body at home. It's built onto a flexible floating chassis that I designed on a CAD package and had made at an engineering company in Bolton. The body is built out of standard panels for building overland vehicles. Composite panel that's glued up in a factory and then I cut them down and cut the windows in and glued the whole thing together. There are no screws at all holding the body together. It's held together by an adhesive called Sikaflex 252. The panel makeup is a very thin one millimeter layer of GRP, a four millimeter layer of plastic. This is a panel from the bathroom so it's 25 millimeters of insulation but in here it's 50 millimeters of insulation we've had this at the top of the alps at minus 20 and it's toasty warm on the other side on the inside is the plywood and the grp as well when i was building the truck i had two options for the windows one was a very expensive glass window and i mean five times more expensive the other one was a sights window standard european motorhome double glazed window these have proved really good i set them back i recessed them into the panels if i was to build the truck again i would put glass windows in because when you're on a trip like this you go in terrain like this you're going to get tree branch scratches across the windows the windows don't break but they scratch and looking out isn't as good we have in here an lpg tank we call it gas it's 80 liters we use it for heating we use it for cooking 80 liters is perhaps a little bit too much but it does the job at the rear of the vehicle, there is a large storage area that goes right the way through to the other side. It's got everything in here from tools, spares, skis. It goes right the way across the vehicle and it's within the heated envelope. So it stays nice and toasty warm and dry in there. If we move around the back of the vehicle, we have two bicycles. They're really securely stored. They don't take us very long to get them out, put them together and be off to explore the areas. I have an extended fuel tank. We've got 300 litres of diesel in the fuel tank. Inside the vehicle, we have a 300 litre fresh water tank. All of the pipes delivering fresh water and all of the waste pipes going to the external waste tank are all within the vehicle so they won't freeze no matter how cold it gets. We are independent for at least a week on water. We are independent for at least a thousand miles on the diesel. We get 14 miles to the US gallon. On the roof we have solar panels, we have 750 watts of solar which charges our 256 amp hour battery bank but that's 256 ampere hours at 24 volts because the European vehicles are 24 volts. It's ample for everything that we need to use. Come and have a look inside my tiny home.
Welcome into this little home of ours. I'd like to show you the layout that we like. We've got, I think in America they call it a queen bed. We love that. That was a definite priority for us and it's got springs underneath that we love to make it very, very comfy, the mattress. These two windows are very special because Phil designed them himself and they have a mosquito nets on them. So what we have to do is pull them out and then open the window and then we can just put them back down and the yeah, nothing comes in. We love it. And then we've got the max fans up there, which it circulates the air. So we have the two windows on either side and we have the two fans as well and it creates lots of ventilation. And then we've got this seating area which we love. We have a little coffee table here but when we're eating main meals we store a bigger table behind the fridge and we just clip it onto here and have our big table. We can sit three people along here, two there, and then a little chair at the end. So we have entertained with six of us, which has been very nice. We've got a skylight here. These screens just keep any insects out. We've got a wardrobe here and we wanted a sliding door going up and down so it didn't impact on the seating area. So we love that. It's got winter clothes in and summer clothes because we're away for a year. We have three heating systems in here. Uh, Phil knows that I like to be warm in the winter. So we have the thermostat here, which runs off the engine. And then we have the diesel heater. And we also have the um, LPG heater for propane. So this is our kitchen area. Phil did all the cupboards in bamboo and then he decided he changed it totally i thought he was mental at the time but he decided the kitchen area would all be gray so we redid the doors and they're all the same we keep everything sealed in these plastic containers and then when we're on the move we just press the button in like that there's a place for everything which is a good thing and you know we keep all our pots in there and all the food in here and when we're on the move, we just use these little clasps to make sure that everything's closed. Phil loves cooking more than I do. So we got a big cooker. It's a gas cooker. We use it nearly every night. He always cooks nice food for us. He loves making his own pizzas. We have pizza once a week and we want to start making our own bread. There's so much sugar in bread in America, I'm afraid. So we used to have a little dog. Unfortunately, she died, but this was her little space and I use that for storage as well. Let's move on to the bathroom. So what's great about this bathroom is this door. It just lets the light in without being able to see in. So we adore that. And then this is our bathroom. It has got the shower and a small sink, big mirror, and it's got a compost toilet. So the compost toilet Phil made, we used to have a cassette toilet in there, but we changed over to compost toilet. No smells and we used sawdust. And we've got a really nice tiled floor, mosaic floor here. Phil's dad used to have a tile company, so Phil finds tiling very easy. And that's what he did for us. All right then. So these pictures are of our family. So if you can see, we've got when we're on camels in Morocco, that was a good holiday. We've got graduation day, all five of us together. That was in our last auto trail. So good big vehicles like this, you can travel with your family. This is when we cycle from London to Paris, great holiday. This is the air conditioning unit and Phil started to do it just before we came away. He's probably halfway in the process of doing it. Somebody else could finish it off for him. You never know, in Mexico or somewhere like that. So it doesn't work yet, but it will one day. This I consider to be one of the most important areas of the inside of the Overland vehicle. Well, first of all, we've got a really big pass-through. 
I extended the top of the cab to facilitate a pass through. We're not getting any younger and you can actually climb through and climb back. If I hadn't extended the top of the cab, it would come to about here. We use just a simple insulated plug to cover it in, works really well. This is the biggest Waco fridge that you can buy. It's a compressor fridge, it's off the ground so it's easy to access everything. Again, we're not getting any younger, we don't want to be on our hands and knees every time we want the milk. So I also have done something different to most people that has proved really successful. Behind the fridge, they tell you you don't need to ventilate them. I have created a chimney, I've got vents in the floor at the bottom the air comes straight up and then out through the silver vent on the side of the vehicle. It just makes its own chimney using the heat from the fridge and everything stays really cool. And my fridge is only working for about 20% of the time, whereas often they're working 70% of the time. Down here is the bulk of the electrics. It's just a very, very simple system. I have my house batteries under here, wired at 24 volts. Everything I could get within the vehicle at 24 volts I did, so my water pump and my electric space heaters and everything like that are all 24 volts. I then have a 12 volt dropper in here, so that anything I couldn't get at 24 volts, like the ignition on the cooker and various all the LEDs, they're all at 12 volts but it's a one wire system there's one wire comes from the batteries to a fuse up to a switch and then to the appliance and back to the batteries and it's one wire for everything so if something goes it doesn't affect anything else and if something does go fault finding is easy for me the philosophy behind this truck has proved quite successful and the philosophy was to keep it as small as possible to get everything in, to keep it as light as possible to get everything in and to keep it as simple as possible so that I can work out how to put things right. Shall we go for a drive? This is my favourite part of this vehicle. What a view, what an evening. It really is a comfortable vehicle to drive and a great place to be. We see everything. The vehicle was a military vehicle, but it's based on a standard commercial seven and a half tonner. So it's got all of the sound insulation that a standard seven and a half tonner would have. I've of course blocked off the noises coming from the rear of the vehicle, but it makes for a quiet, pleasant place to be when you're traveling. It's a six-speed manual, has high and low ratio box, has locking differentials, and optional four-wheel drive. So it's got the capability to get me anywhere that I have got the bottle to go. And that view, absolutely beautiful, isn't it? I think anybody can do it at any age. I mean, we've just reached our 60s, haven't we? We have. We just want to carry on and be as young as we possibly can be for as long as we can be. We're going to try and do this and get around the world before we get too old to do it. Because to do it, yeah. Because age catches up with everybody. It does. And it's going to catch up with us. We're getting out and enjoying ourselves and making the most of the time we have together and the time we have left. <laughs> thanks for watching this week's video i hope you guys enjoyed it and i will see you soon with another unique home tour